So it's official everyone, the Elden Ring DLC has been announced, Shadow of the Earth Tree. I've seen a lot of people saying how they'd wished it was more than just a screenshot for the announcement. And while I do get where they're coming from, there is so, so much more to this picture than people are giving it credit. And before we get into the details of this image, can I just say why? Why from software did you have to announce this as I was sleeping? Like, come on, man. The first thing that is bound to pop out at you would be the gigantic tree. And given the title of the DLC, Shadow of the Erd Tree, there are many possibilities of what this tree could actually be. We know that the Erd Tree, long ago, used to be the great tree in the age of the Crucible we find in the deep root depths. Maybe this DLC will have something to do with the Crucible. Another possibility, and personally my favourite, as to what the tree could actually be, is in the Helfen Steeple item description. Great sword patterned after the black steeple of the Helfen, the lampwood which guides the dead of the spirit world. The lamplight is similar to grace in appearance, only it is said that it can only be seen by those who have met death in battle. Notice how the lampwood is in fact wood which is gathered from trees like the one in the announcement. Also, it states that the lamplight is similar in appearance to grace. Grace is formed by the greater will in the earth tree. The fact that the lamplight is similar to grace suggests that perhaps it is a shadow of the earth tree. A twin of sorts to grace and the earth tree. Also, also notice the black of the great sword possesses a very, very close resemblance to the tree in the announcement, which is, after all, patterned after the black steeple of the Helfen. I also want you guys and girls to see the similarity between the impenetrable thorn rune, which is speculated to be Radagon's rune, and the strange sort of line on this great tree. I think, possibly, if it's a shadow of the earth tree. Maybe this is some kind of impenetrable thorn situation? Or maybe if the impenetrable thorns are Radagon's great rune, perhaps it's some kind of great rune effect by some unknown demigod, perhaps Mikola, maybe, if the DLC is about him. Though that's just speculation. Back onto the subject of the lamplight. The lamplight can only be seen by those who've met their death in battle. Doesn't that sound similar to our, the player character's journey through the lands between? This is reinforced even further by the fact that if you zoom in, you can clearly see Torrent galloping through fields on what looks like wheat that I haven't personally seen anywhere in the lands between. And riding Torrent is someone with blonde hair. My first thought was, is this Mikola? I mean, it sort of resembles the Mikola we see in the opening of Elden Ring, but I really don't think this is the case given the inconsistencies of why would he have Torrent in the first place? If this is Mikola, why isn't he deformed from Moog's accursed blood? My second thought was, is this a Tarnished? And while again there are inconsistencies, I do believe this to be the Tarnished. While that hair still isn't in the game of the present, maybe it's something that will be added in the DLC. Another thing I thought was very, very interesting would be what looks like tombstones, that looked like the tombstones that were cut content in Dark Souls 3, but in the form of the spirits we see around the lands between. This also adds a lot into the whole lamp, light and ghost flame theory, given that they are spirits. Another thing that really stood out to me and that I wanted to talk about is when is this set? I mean if you've played Dark Souls 1 and the Arturis of the Abyss DLC, you'll know that Satan Ula seal which is eons in the past compared to the present of Dark Souls 1. This could possibly be the case here as well. I mean if we're talking about the shadow of the Erd Tree, it could be hinting at the Great Tree which was the Erd Tree's form before it became, well, the Erd Tree. Perhaps this is the Age of the Crucible. Perhaps we're transported back into time, like in Ulysseal. Alternatively, and this is going to be very, very speculatory, what if this is Mikola's dream? I mean, there's a tree here, a shadow of the Erd Tree. We know that Mikola's Halig Tree is a sapling of the Erd Tree that he bathed in his own period of blood. This could also give an explanation as to why Torrent is actually here. Perhaps we've invaded Mikola's dream and we're going to find him and maybe kill him. I mean, I don't know what he's really done to us, but you know, is what it is. Even like three hours after it's been announced, something that's bound to pop up a lot is, who is that person riding the horse? And while I already said it's not likely to be Mikla, let's talk about that because knowing from software, there's probably gonna be some crazy reveal that it is actually Mikla. I mean, don't get me wrong, it does look like Mikla, the hairstyle and the clothing, but the only thing that may be a bit apprehensive about that would be Torrent. Now, although Torrent is our mount inside of Elden Ring, there has been previous owners, that we know from dialogue. 
perhaps Mikola was one of them. But then maybe when Mikola was ripped out of the Halig tree by Mook, Melina, the possible third pure blood child of Marika and Radagon, and the sister to Mikola, took hold of Torrent and looked after him before a certain tarnished arrived in the lands between. And personally, I haven't seen any landscape or mountains or anything that looks like this in the lands between, so that adds even more to the fact that this is actually Mikola's dream. If you look very, very carefully, there looks to be some kind of entrance at the base of the great tree. It looks very, very similar to the one we see inside of Elden Ring at the final boss battle with Marika and Radagon. Perhaps we'll have some kind of big boss fights, like maybe we'll fight Mikola or Saint Trine of the Cradle Song. I don't know, that's just speculation, but I have really, really high hopes for whatever is going to be inside that great tree. Something that I noticed just was the structures inside this plane look very, very similar to the ones located in the Halo tree, possibly adding even more evidence to this actually being Mikola's dream. Also, fuck, I've said it like, also like, seven times in this video, but I'm sorry guys, I'm going to say it for an eighth. The wheat on this field some of them look to have the same golden pigmentation as the Mikola's lily, possibly hinting at some sort of connection between Mikola and this plane. Another obscure detail would be the ruins that look to be a church of Marika due to the entrance and just the design in general, but if perhaps this is to do with Mikola then maybe it's not a church of Marika but a church of Mikola which would be the first of its kind, not excluding the shrines inside of the Halic tree. Also, for the ninth time, there appears to be some coffins leading up to the Great Tree. Perhaps this is some sort of protection for the Great Tree and whoever's inside of it. Maybe some big boss like Gale will pop out of one of these coffins, like breaking it off. I, I don't know. That's just speculation. But I'm, I've got really big hopes for this DLC and the shit in it. I can't wait. It's just going to be so amazing. Also, for the tenth time, there appears to be some kind of golden road perhaps that also shares the same pigmentation as Mikola's lily perhaps a path to the great tree sadly everyone that is the end of the analysis i really hope you have enjoyed if you did please consider leaving a like and subscribe as it truly helps the channel it's honestly mind-blowing the fact that i've been able to make an almost eight minute video on one one screenshot i mean i think that shows you how in depth this DLC is going to be and it's just hyping me up even more and more like Jesus Christ this is going to be fucking amazing right that's the end of the video guys hopefully I'll see you in the next one and yeah may you all find your worth in the waking world